GitHub is probably one of the most important tools to learn uh, because if you use it incorrectly, it can be a bit cringe. It could be a little bit bad, uh, but I think everyone needs to learn it, especially if you're using Mac, Windows, and Linux, uh, because you're really holding yourself back and crippling yourself. Because I recently saw an LTT video where he completely bastardized uh, Git, which uh, I'll play that real quick snippet just so you can see what not to do when it comes to GitHub. So it turns out that right-click save target as gets you an HTML file in .sh clothing because, I don't know, some borderline arbitrary reason probably. And in order to get it to be an actual .sh file, I had to copy it into a text editor, Kate, and then save that as a script and execute it in the terminal. So first off, you never do a right-click save as. This would be like saving this target as uh, an HTML of PS1. It'd basically be clicking this and saving this entire web page. That's not the way to save it. If you ever needed anything from Git, the first thing I want to teach you is one, don't do this. Uh, never save anything like in, in this method, no matter what system you're using. You'd want to go to raw, and this gives you the raw file. And this is a very clean file. There's a lot of different ways to pull this down now. So you could just do like a control S on your keyboard to save this file. This would work in Mac, Windows, Linux, it doesn't matter. And this would save just this raw file. And you'd want to name it like Windows Dbloat PS1 up here. And it would save a very clean file, which is very, very good, important to know. Uh, however, most people don't do this. Most developers are either using Mac or Linux. Uh, some use Windows. Uh, and if you're using Windows, I would highly recommend downloading what's called uh, GitHub Desktop. This third-party tool is amazing. There's other third-party tools that are also very good uh, that you can tie in and do this. But it's a good way to just basically come in here. Let's say we want to grab that Windows directory. And, and let's say I wanted to make changes to it. Uh, typically, I would always pull it into here. So I haven't actually pulled it into this system yet. We're just going to grab this Windows 10 script and just hit clone. And what this does is it grabs every file in this, this thing. So if I ever wanted to edit any of these files, I could easily just pull up my browser here, go to GitHub, and you'll see I now have every single file in that Git. So I could clone it this way. If I just wanted one file, I could do the raw file by clicking raw and then just doing a control S to save that file. Uh, or a third way to download from this, uh, these are all good methods, I would say, is just wget, come back into your browser um, and click that raw get this entire raw URL, and then we're just coming back into here and pasting that URL into this right here. And you see, it's right there. Uh, I've actually downloaded it a couple times. <laughs> but uh, we can just uh, remove those. But that's three different ways to do it. One from command line, one from your browser, and then one using GitHub Desktop. All these methods are also very good, uh, but a fourth way to download that would also be proper instead of doing a, a, a weird save as maneuver, which I've never, I've never seen anybody do it that way. Uh, but again, uh, to just save yourself some embarrassment, come in here, click download zip. That also would work and you'd get all the files in this project. Uh, but again, it just depends on your preference. All four of these ways are acceptable. Now, let's get into the fun stuff. Like some people are like, well, why is Git so complicated? Why is it so good? And it's just because people don't understand the idea behind it. It's meant to be a collaborative tool to where you can collaborate with thousands of people at the same time. This script right here, I've had thousands of people contribute to it. I mean, it's amazing how many people uh, have done commits and other things and, oh, hey, Titus, you're terrible at English. You've misspelled this. And they'll do like what's called a pull request. I actually have six uh, pull requests. So let me just show you that, uh, why you'd use Git. So uh, he's actually, I think, contributed before to it. But usually I go to file check and they go, hey, this is actually wrong. So uh, I was installing VLC player right here. It looks like it should actually list this instead of finish installing Notepad. That looks like a legit uh, typo in my part. So in this one, I'd be like, yes, let's merge that. So instead of me fixing that typo, I just went to my pull request and some other genius out there on the internet, some kind gentleman just went ahead and said, hey, uh, let me fix that for you, Titus. You, you made a typo, you big dummy. And I'm like, 
Beautiful. How awesome is that? I literally didn't have to fix something. Someone someone already fixed my project for me. Now, obviously, there's there's a lot of other ones, and you got to be careful when accepting these merges. But that was a perfect example of a beautiful pull request and why you'd want to do open source. Uh, because a lot of people are like, hey, your Windows 10 script is so good, you should make it an executable, close source it, and sell it for some kind of money. Well, I wouldn't be able to profit from this. This is really the beauty of it. Yes, there's monetary gain I'm missing out on, but think of how awesome this tool could be when it comes to like three or four years from now and we have thousands and thousands of more people into it. It would make this project amazing. So that's the power of open source. That's the power of GitHub uh, or Git in general uh, because you can use Git on different services like GitLab. So that's that's amazing. I absolutely love this. This is one why you, you do something like this. Uh, because a lot of people are like, well, that's silly. You should just make money. And, you know, sometimes life's not about money, guys. <laughs> uh, again, sometimes you can make a way better product using Git. So that's just one example of it. But let's let's give you some more power. I want to give you some more examples of how we could use and uh, make amazing things with this. So I'm actually going to get out of my Windows 10 script now. Uh, I'm working on something new on my live streams. If you ever pop in, check them out. On Tuesday, I usually pop in in the afternoon, central time. And then on Friday, I usually do it in the morning at nine o'clock. So be sure and check them out. Come in, say hi to me. I'd appreciate it. But right now I'm working on a custom version of Debian. And Debian is basically what almost every single Linux distribution is based on. It's like the granddaddy of them all. So I was trying to make something more of a server-based thing with just some really nice GUI elements on top of it. It's actually this entire system I'm in right now. But anytime I make any changes to it, I'm always in here. And instead of doing these commits, I might actually come into this and let's uh, let's just get out of this project. I'm going to just change it to Debian and I'm going to go to this project uh, where I've downloaded. And now that I've changed in this directory, I have a nice little terminal here. You don't have to work in terminal. You could just work in here or uh, alternatively, like some people I know are not comfortable with terminal. Uh, we could easily go into uh, VS Code. So let's uh, pull up VS Codium, and I'll take that over here. We'll close that. Uh, and what I'm going to do is just open up that folder and hit OK. So what this does is it pulls in this entire project right into VS Code. Uh, I personally like to work kind of between code. I'm weird. I, I'm, I do terminal and I also like GUI editors. Uh, I like to just kind of see what's fastest, and I kind of like to go back and forth to see which one could be better. So with that, I could easily make my changes here. Let me let me find something here I might want to add. Uh, I do need to expand. I don't want people using LX appearance. Uh, expand this. Um, and let's say I want to save this out. Over here, you'll notice the change. We can actually see what's changed. So now we get in, need to get into actually submitting changes to a project. Now, the it, change happens. Let's say you make a change and now you want to you're the only, let's say you're the sole owner of a project like this one. Nobody else is really contributing because I'm still kind of building the foundation. Uh, let's say I want to just, I can leave it as blank or usually I like to title it. Uh, let's say doc update. I'm just updating documentation and you might just go updating documentation uh, and need to expand. So that kind of just gives a little bit of a uh, description. And of course I'm terrible with English. So I always misspell something. And then we do a commit. We've committed it, but if we look back on here into this, uh, it's not actually there. So if we actually look at, uh, the readme or actually the user file, you'll see our change hasn't done. We've done the commit, but now we got to do the push. So you might want to, as you work on a project, a lot of times I might do multiple commits and then do a push because then I, I don't want everyone to see those commits before I test them. So I might commit the test and go, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to check back on that in a second. But let's say I went through, I'm like, yes, this change is perfect. Everyone needs to see this. You'd push it. And now it's pushed and published over here. And we'll just do a reload and you should see it. 
Everybody in the world can do this. So when working in multi-systems and also working in collaborative environments, this can be very good. Uh, but usually after you do a commit, you usually want to do a push at least sometime soon, uh, mainly because if you have a collaborators and you want them to see your commit so they can pull down those changes. But if you guys are both working on the same copy and you both are changing things, what happens is before you do your commit, you'll do a fetch, uh, which is I'm gonna teach you next. Back in here, we would do a fetch and let's say someone else made a con contribution or maybe they saw my contribution like expand this uh you need to be what the hell titus let's let's just go what is is this <laughs> and we'll just do a commit right here so this actually commits and pushes the change directly on it using the web interface now usually this would be another person but for this example i wanted to kind of show uh, what happens when we do a fetch doesn't show immediately, but the fetch will say, Hey, there's polls to happen. So now we can actually review those poll changes before pulling them down, or we can just go ahead and pull right now. We're going to pull and you'll see, boom, it popped in here and you can actually see, I have a little plugin that says, Hey, someone updated this 16 minutes ago and it was labeled update three or something like that. You can have, you can do really cool plugins with VS code, or you can just use terminal two. It doesn't matter. Everyone has their own flavor, their own development uh, mojo, so to speak. But this is basic gets in. So, so this is basically how Git works. You'd want to use it for uh, the commit and push when you want to push changes, or let's say you just have a project and you just, it got updated by your favorite creator. And you're like, man, uh, I want to I want to just update mine. Well, then you would just do a pull. You would just do a fetch and then it would say, "Hey, there's updates." And then you'd pull those updates again. And then you have everything up to date. That's amazing without having to go to the website at all. So very powerful in all these ways. These are just kind of scratches the surface. I wanted to give you just a base layer, a base understanding of Git because it's such a powerful tool, so badly misunderstood. And uh, when I saw that one Linus video and, and how he, he used it, I was um, ah, I was really upset. I was like, man, this it does not make Git look good. And it really is possibly one of the best inventions in the past 10 years for the development realm. And uh, maybe, it's, maybe it's been around longer. I know I'm I'm pretty new to Git, so to speak. If you look at my Git commits, I've really only powered up in the last couple of years. And uh, that's really uh, something it took me a little bit to get. But hopefully now you can get a new appreciation for Git and how awesome it is. And now you can go teach other people and you can use Git and maybe you'll contribute to one of my projects. I'd love to see a pull request because when you go in and push one of my projects, what happens is I don't obviously allow you to commit directly to my project, but it'll pop into my pull request. And then I can say, hey, what other geniuses out there or aspiring developers are wanting to develop or, or collaborate with me on projects? 